Hi guys, this is Jason here from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are going to look at a topic which I call modal harmony or modal chords, and it's a it's a very interesting way to take something very simple like just a C major chord or a C minor chord, but give it a very modal perspective or give it a very scalar perspective. It, it really depends on how you're looking at. this chapter where you want to look at it as a mode lydian dorian mixolydian phrygian or you know locrian etc or if you're just saying okay i'm i know the major scale i kind of know the minor scale but what else is there to explore you know so the way i tend to look at modes is just as a scale that's generally how i use them to compose and when you look at modes as a scale you can even start interacting them parallelly that means you can look at a song being on c major but then you can borrow chords from certain other scales like you can here and there make it a c minor scale even though for the most part it's c major you know or for the most part you can make it a c major but then here and there you bring in like a phrygian vibe you know so let's get started with the idea uh, we are going to just start with a c major chord or a c minor chord okay so, and then we are going to just see how to develop a modal vibe or a vibe which is new to the ear it's not going to feel like C major, right? And another thing which which I'd like to point out is we are not going to take many chord progressions. We're just going to literally take one chord. So just C major, and how do we get the modes into the chord? Like for example, right? Or Right, so let's get cracking. And before we do, if you haven't already, do subscribe to the channel, turn on the bell icon for notifications. There are quite a few videos which will keep coming your way at various levels. So if you are a beginner, you will have a fair amount of beginner lessons. You'll you'll have a lot of these advanced concepts, theory, ear training, and a lot more. So uh, it's important to stay notified. So hit the bell, subscribe if you haven't already. Let's get cracking. So if you take C major pretty much the entire discussion could be around this chord. Now, if I just hit that chord, what scale does it appear to be in, you know, currently this music? One might argue, oh, this is the C major scale, which it is, but then it could also be part of some other scales. could also be part of the mixolydian scale okay or it could be part of the mixo flat 6 scale So if you actually have a melody around the C major chord it would be or it could be back to major or could even be lydian lydian is has the sharp 4 that one right so you have lot of these options like as i look at it you can even have what is that scale which still has a c major very eastern vibe right 
Yeah. It's off the top. Look at the number of scales which seem to actually uh, demand this chord or contain this chord, if you will. Right? C major, C Lydian, C Mixolydian, C Mixolydian flat six. Or maybe uh, a scale with a flattened two, very Arabic vibe. And the list will well go on if you think about it. You, you're just trying to look at scales which have a root, a major third, and a perfect fifth. So that's the backbone of this lesson, right? You just have to know that when you're playing a C major chord and if you're going to extend that chord for a certain duration of time and if your music is very modal, then generally when I think of the word modal, I always tend to look at the the root or whatever you play in your left hand or the bass to last a bit longer than the average song you know it's not going to be that doesn't feel to me at least as a very modal song you'd want the C to be lingering on for a bit longer then you have possibilities then you're thinking oh what scale goes over this chord right of course there are some great jazz artists who do do it over quick chord changes right they'll be playing a different scale for every chord but the way i look at things generally is whenever you're looking at modes you're tending to have more consistency in your bass or more longevity in the bass you'll have c it'll just go on for a fair amount of time okay coming to the job at hand now so if i'm on c major and now I ask myself the question, how do I get a Lydian vibe with C major as my backbone? So I'm pretty much playing a song on C major, but I want to feel it like it is C Lydian scale and not C major scale. So you need that F sharp. So there are two approaches which we are going to do for the entire lesson. The first approach would be to communicate the harmony with thirds instead of triads. So you go C's third is E, then D's third is F sharp. Mind you, I'm on the the Lydian scale. So I don't want to do F. F is not part of Lydian. So all thirds. That's pretty much it. B, D. So let's say you're just playing C major. There we go. So I've created like a flourish of thirds. Which kind of spell out C Lydian, isn't it? Very important as a composer or as an arranger in a in a in a musical in any musical context, because you're spelling out the mode, you're spelling out the scale, and even though you're using one chord, can really help the singer of your group to you know say, oh, this is the scale this guy wants me to compose my melody on. It should be not because I did not play F I did not embellish with F rather I'm giving the melody the chance to sing this F sharp or I'm kind of giving the melody a, a, a nod you know play the F sharp you need to be on the Lydian rather than the major okay so this is very important if you're it, uh, like a newer artist in a newer band you know where everyone is at a kind of a learning stage I hope you've got that drill. So play a major chord and then embellish with thirds. You could just do one pair of thirds, which is extra. You do C major. That's it. It's Lydian. And that's your song. 
coloring it up with that lydian third pair you could do others as well or you could use thirds like in a flurry or in a pattern like ta ta ra re re ra ru ta now your now what you do on the piano starts becoming rememberable on its own Okay so you color it up with thirds you can also color it up with the triads which are built from the mode so of course C major you can do a D major E minor sharp diminished so you get the idea you can do all these triads over the C bass or you can just do the D chord Okay so that's about lydian now let's say you want something really exotic you know uh, generally what i consider exotic i just have that brand for scales in general it's something with maybe a 2 flat or a 5 flat that's how i've sort of uncluttered my mind with uh, with those sounds why i call them exotic is because you rarely hear them in popular music at least western popular music you know so that one so if you use that chord d flat over c major what could the scale be that could be that or so just take a c major chord and just add d flat and f which is the next third of that new scale ta ra re re di so third third pair third pair third pair all thirds so c major chord number 1 now you're telling your singer it pretty much needs to be da da di di do 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 na 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 te te di di do 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 na 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 now in this context you're kind of leaving the 6th and the 7th note free for the melody to kind of interpret you could do So ta ra re 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 ra la da You could even sing that ta ra re re la da 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 or ta ra 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 So I could do that seventh or that seventh both options exist so anyway so that was about that scale i i don't even know the name of that scale to be honest it doesn't really matter you don't have to name scales before you use them you can compose stuff and yeah somewhere down the line someone will just call it a name or you re- read up on it at some point so the the approach we are trying to follow is take a chord c major and then embellish it with at least one more ingredient which is a third in that new in that proposed scale or a triad in that proposed scale so so we've looked at lydian we've looked at this arabic scale Okay now why don't we consider a few possibilities given a C minor home base chord that one so if i do this is a great way to add color but if you do it's 
So if you're just playing C minor, you could probably embellish with. What does that A do? Makes it Dorian, doesn't it? Dorian is nothing but a minor scale with a raised sixth or you can just remember it as a major scale with a flat 3 and a flat 7. So to embellish just the thirds from the Dorian or triads from the Dorian with a C bass consistent. also be very melodic you'll find like rock and roll musicians do this all the time and they are spelling out the mixolydian for example so if you take this you get patterns like it's like a standard rock and roll pattern right now what happened there C major, that's a third up and that's a third spelling out the mixolydian. So, mixolydian. Okay, so you have all these options. So, start with a, a, a minor or a major chord. So, the, the job for you now is to take a major chord you know or a minor chord you know and then embellish that chord with two possibilities one is with thirds so harmonic minor is spelt out you know or embellish it with triads Dorian in this case is spelt out or start with a major home base and you spell out all sorts of scales it could be like very exotic or commonly used scales the mixo flat 6 or just the normal mixolydian rock and roll right you can even do very theatric things with a major or a minor chord you can just do like you don't even have to sometimes care oh what scale am I on you can just use this as a way to color up a chord just take a, a, a major chord just that quite well I think you can just look at it that way you, you, you can say like right now I was just writing a song with C, F and G and I've just used I've just taken the triad messed it up a bit by taking the third and the fifth down also becomes um, like very melodic on its own you could use it in a musical context you can use it to write a ballad in a more interesting way if you wish right so that's about the lesson guys let's recap this is what we call uh, we're calling this lesson as modal harmony embellishments but then you can you don't have to look at it as a mode. You can just say, I am currently playing C major or C minor. I want my singer or I want my audience to feel the scale which I'm feeling here. So you need to first think, okay, what scale am I, what is the bigger picture here? C major is a chord. It's not a scale. It's just three notes. So you need another little bit more information 
to give you that push or give you that nudge to say, oh, this is the scale I'm actually on. Because a C major chord could be part of so many scales. A C minor chord could be part of so many scales. So we use two ways of embellishment. One is thirds. And we've used uh, triads. Okay, so you don't have to do too many embellishments. Even one was enough, as we saw earlier. Lydian, that's it. Because I've given the four sharp. Or if I do um, Dorian, because I have a minor third and a major sixth. Or very Phrygian now. Or major chord with the 2 flat and the 4 or mixo there we have it or you can just forget about theory altogether take a major chord and just move the the non root of the chord which is C so these notes just move them wherever you want or you just get a very different sound. So uh, another concluding point which I'd like to make in this lesson is a scale can be derived using just two chords. So if you have two chords in a piece of music, you can actually extrapolate a scale from those notes because inevitably two chords are going to have a minimum of four notes, right? In most cases, a minimum of five notes. In some cases, six notes because each chord is three, three notes. And I haven't even gotten started on bigger chords. We've just taken major and minor triads in this lesson. Hope you found the lesson useful, guys. Again, this is Jason here from the Nathaniel School of Music. Uh, if you want to learn music from us, if you'd want to interact with our with our faculty through our virtual courses, do fill up the registration form. Uh, and if you want to make the YouTube learning process a lot better, you can consider subscribing to us on Patreon. You can download all our handwritten notes and there are a few more benefits as well coming your way. And uh, if you are at a more beginner level and you want videos which are curated at that level, you can consider the members only platform. All you have to do for that is hit the join button and that will give you access to numerous structured lessons which we've shot, which can help you, uh, you know, start all the way from the foundational level and then go forward. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.